we first need to know a background about the elbow and the anatomy of the elbow. So that's what we're first going to teach you. So the elbow, it is um, a hinge joint, but it's, just, it's more than just a hinge joint. It's also a pivot joint. And if it's two joints and one, I always kind of thought to myself, why we always refer to it as just the elbow, not like two joints. It's because um, both joints are enveloped by a common synovial membrane. And what a synovial membrane is, is I have a couple pictures of it here, help me explain, is when two bones come together like this, uh, they need to have space so they can rotate and pivot, or whatever it is that that joint does. If the bones were together, then it just rub together and have a lot of uh, stress on the bones. So a synovial membrane like this, is you're going to have the outside part of it, right, right here, and then on the inside you're going to have cartilage and then synovial fluid um, on the inside. And so here's a really good example for me because I thought like the in-depth picture that made sense, um, I thought this kind of explained it to me. So you can see these two rods here are just like the bones. Um, the orange right here is like the cartilage. And then the black and the purple is like the synovial membrane that keeps it all together, while the white inside is like the synovial fluid. And it's like fluid to help you uh, rotate and move that muscle or move that joint. So a synovial membrane is kind of a cool fact I looked up. Um, so that is the elbow joint, and then elbow bones. So the elbow is part of the arm, in case you didn't know. And in the arm, there are three bones. You have the humerus, which is um, the upper part of the arm. And then down in the forearm, you have two bones that are paired together. You have the radius and the ulna. And if you have a palm up like this, you'll notice that the ulna is on the pinky side. It goes from the pinky down to the elbow, and the radius goes from the thumb down to the elbow. I hit sort of here because um, the elbow is not just a hinge joint that goes up and down. You can also rotate it and pivot it when you can go palm up, palm down. So the ulna, which is on the pinky side, lays parallel to the radius on the thumb side when the palm is up. But when you rotate your elbow over, the radius now crosses over the ulna to connect back to the elbow up here. I thought that was really confusing and really interesting to me. But here's a picture that kind of helped me understand it some more. Um, supination, which means palm up, this is the look at the right right arm of somebody, right? Um, palm up, so the pinky's right here, and the ulna you can see lays parallel to the radius, it connects back up to the elbow down here in the humerus. Um, though pronation, which means palm down, you've noticed that now this is the pinky side, right? So palm up, pinky's here, flip it over, uh, pinky's right there. Now it runs straight, but the radius has turned over and creates an X as though it crosses, so it can connect back to the the elbow. So what's really unique about the elbow is you can hinge it and also turn it over and pivot it as you move. Um, and that's one of something very unique about the elbow. So uh, we're going to be talking mostly today because we're doing Tommy John surgery, which is surgery of the elbow. We're going to be talking about the ulna a lot because most of the force of the elbow joint is transferred between the humerus and the ulna, whereas most of the force for the wrist is transferred between the wrist and the radius. So today we're going to be talking a lot more about the ulna than the radius. So that's just to let you guys know where we're going. Um, so the nerves in the elbow. Though I don't want to go really in depth upon this. Uh, we do need to talk about it um, and to talk about the surgery and how to get around them and everything. There are three main nerves in the arm. You have the median nerve, the ulnar nerve, and the radial nerve. And right here, as you, can, you guys can see, there are some pictures of it. The median and ulnar nerve run right through here, palm up, right, so they're coming right down through here. And then the radial nerve kind of loops around as this cool funky stuff that I liked. But the surgery that we're going to talk about, Tommy John surgery, works around the median and ulnar nerve. They're not like using the median and ulnar nerve or trying to change them around, but you have to be careful to make sure you don't get nerve damage. So they're working around the median and ulnar nerve. And I'll talk about that more as we get more in depth in the surgery. So the elbow muscles. Um, a lot of the muscles for your wrist um, and your hand and everything run up through the elbow. So I said here, Muscles that allow flexation and extension to both the wrist and fingers run through the elbow or run into the elbow. Um, flexor muscles, allowing the angle to decrease between body parts, like to make a fist, right? Um, run along the inside or medial part of the elbow, which is right in here. If you make a fist, you can feel the muscles right here kind of flex. And that's coming in through the elbow. Tommy John surgery, uh, they get to it by making an incision right here on the elbow. So you can understand that to get to the bone and to fix the joint of the elbow, you're going to have to work around these muscles, especially the flexor muscles. So you're just kind of just like a little point to, you know, make sure that I was right and I'm not just, 
online to you guys. So you can see here that wrist extensors come up on top of the elbow right here at the forearm, and then wrist flexors come on the inside part right here. Okay? Everybody understand that? Are there any questions at this point? Okay. So those are wrist flexors. So now elbow ligaments. Um, Tommy John surgery has a lot to do with the ligaments. And the elbow, I think ligaments are one of the coolest parts about the elbow. Um, ligaments around the joint come together to form a joint capsule. And I talked about the synovial membrane earlier. And the joint capsule is just uh, a watertight sack full of synovial fluid and it just encompasses the synovial membrane. It's just another part of fibrous tissue that encompasses the synovial membrane like I talked about a couple slides back. Um, and to make this joint capsule, two ligaments um, are used in the elbow. And that's the ulnar, ulnar collateral ligament and the radial collateral ligament. What we're going to be talking about, because Tommy John surgery is done on the ulnar collateral ligament. Uh, the ulnar collateral ligament is made up of three sections. Um, it makes almost like a fan looking thing. As you can see here, it's kind of confusing down there, but I have another picture I'll show you in a second here. But um, the three sections that make up the UCL are the anterior bundle, the posterior bundle, and the intermediate or sometimes called the transverse bundle. So the anterior bundle is usually the most important part, and that's kind of the one that like runs on top right here, that connects the humerus to the ulna, and that's this part right here. Um, and it is the primary stabilizer for the elbow for full functional range from 20 to 120 degrees. And the posterior bundle is a secondary stabilizer at only the 30, de 30 degree flexation. And you guys should probably be thinking to yourself, well, if this is only the secondary at 30 degree flexation, what else stabilizes the elbow and all the other degrees of motion? And what's the other secondary you know, um, stabilizer for the elbow at these degrees? And the answer is, it's the other ligaments in the elbow that help stabilize the elbow, as well as all the muscles that support the elbow that are going to help stabilize it through all your range of motion. So that's the UCL. And here's a better picture for some of you guys that are having confusion. So the anterior bundle, the top one right here, is easily the most important and holds the most full force for the elbow. The posterior bundle is kind of like makes the, makes the fan for it and the transverse finishes up at the bottom. So it's like a fan looking type of ligament. Um, Tommy John surgery. So surgery. There are two main types of surgery for uh, Tommy John surgery. You have the figure of eight technique and the docking technique. Uh, and I'll be talking about these a lot more in depth in just a minute here. But just keep that in mind, there's two types of surgery, the figure of eight and the docking. Though before you can get this surgery, um, they first check to see if you need it by taking an MRI. And then possibly you might need arthroscopy. And well, after you get the arthroscopy, if you need it, um, you then have to harvest the tendon. And what that, that's very confusing because UCL stands for what? Ulnar collateral ligament, right? And so to replace it, we have to use a tendon, which is really odd. But it is replaced with either the palmaris longest tendon, sometimes called the PL tendon, or with the hamstring tendon or a tendon from either the knee or foot, depending on it. And the reason that the PL tendons are much more common is because they're not exactly necessary uh, anatomically for the human body. In fact, only 85% of the population has a PL tendon. So for the 15% of the population, that does not have a PL tendon, that is why hamstrings, tendons, or tendons from the near foot are used. So, um, now the reason that tendon is used uh, instead of a ligament, there's a lot of differences but a lot of similarities between the two. And at first, I was very surprised that a ligament could be replaced with a tendon. I thought you would have to harvest a new ligament or whatever it was. But they are very similar, and just to highlight some of the differences that they have, Ligaments are uh, very fibrous, they're strongly stretchy, um, connective tissues that hold bone to bone. So ligaments are bone to bone, while tendons are muscle to bone. And then ligaments control the range of motion of a joint. Okay? And then tendons are a tough band of fibrous connective tissues, made up of collagen fibers, uh, and connects muscle to bone. And they're very similar to the ligament. Um, the ligaments are basically used as like almost a brace for a joint, that's how they use. Both are still made up of collagen fibers, and the ligaments are smaller than the tendons, uh, by the way they're woven by the collagen fibers, and the tendons are less elastic than the ligaments. And a fun little fact that a friend told me is the term double jointed refers to people who have more elastic ligaments, and that's why your joints are a little more elastic. So, the way that uh, tendons are, be are able to to take the place of ligaments, or because um, 
I thought that uh, we would just find another ligament and harvest it, like I said.